Hi, so what you're going to see is a video that I made for school. It's an assignment in English class. I had to make a video for uh, about the Raspberry Pi, which I did. But here's the thing. I made it, I actually simplified um, the steps and the process of making the tutorial because my teachers are not that technical. I mean, they don't care that much. All they care is about the English and the video itself. So you should not follow the tutorial step by step exactly as I say it, because I mean, it should work, but there's no warranty that it will work. I mean, there's no guarantee. If you want a good tutorial, go on YouTube and you will find it. I actually watched some to make mine. So they are absolutely good. You, I recommend them. So yeah, enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Phil, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Raspberry Pi and how I made a surveillance camera with it. The Raspberry Pi is a very lightweight single board computer that fits into a credit card. So this is the, si the actual size of the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it fits in my hand. It was originally made to teach children the principles of programming, but a lot of people started to use them into their own personal projects. The Raspberry Pi was introduced to the market in 2012, but as of July 2017, over 15 million Raspberry Pis have been sold. The board received multiple hardware upgrades, making it easier and faster to use. In this tutorial, I am going to use the Raspberry Pi Model 3. You can buy one of these online for 35 euros as of January 2018. The nice thing about the Raspberry Pi is that you can do really anything you want. The only limit is your imagination. In this video, I'm going to make a surveillance camera to see if people come in my bedroom when I'm not at home. The makers of the Raspberry Pi actually sell a camera module to go with the Raspberry Pi, but I do not have one, so I am going to use this old USB webcam that I have in my house. Here's what you need. A Raspberry Pi, a webcam or a camera module, a power supply of at least 5 volts and 2.5 amps, a micro SD card of any size you want, but it should be of at least 4 gigabytes. This tutorial requires an internet connection. You can use either Wi-Fi or an internet cable. In this case, I'm going to use an internet cable. You also need another computer to install and configure the software. And finally, but this is optional, a cup of tea or coffee. To start, plug in the internet cable in the Raspberry Pi, then insert the micro SD card in the SD card slot, and then plug in the camera in any USB port, and finally power on the Raspberry Pi with the power cable. Before going any further, I'm going to assume that you have Raspbian installed on your Raspberry Pi, that you know how to use the Linux terminal, and that you know how to connect to your Raspberry Pi via SSH. If this is not the case, there is some good tutorials and documentation online that will help you. SSH is a way to connect to your computer remotely. To do so, you will need to use a special program on your computer. If you have Windows, the program is called PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y, on Linux and on Mac OS, you're going to need to use the terminal. But before connecting to our Raspberry Pi, we need to get its IP address. To do so, you need to go on the website of your router to get it. In my case, it's going to be 192.168.0.140. But for you, it's going to be different. So make sure that you have the right IP address. Okay, so right now we're going to open up PuTTY. Which, has, which I've done right here. So this is the interface of PuTTY, PuTTY. And so what you need to put is your host name or IP address. So in my case, I'm going to put mine. And then you click open. You're going to get a login as prompt. In my, uh, and you need to put the username of the Raspberry Pi. By default, it's going to be Pi, P-I. And then you need to type your password. 
So the first thing that you want to do is to check if the webcam has been correctly detected by the Raspberry Pi. So you need to enter the command lsusb. And as you can see, I have my webcam, which is right here. Okay, so to install the program, we need to run two commands. The first one is sudo apt-get update, and then you put a semicolon space sudo apt-get install motion. So the program that we're going to use is called motion, but to install it, we need to update the repositories first to make sure that we get the latest version of the program. So then you need to hit enter, and you need to wait some time. Okay, so now the install process is done. As you can see, Motion is already installed and it has the newest version, which is good. So to configure the program, we need to edit a text file. You need to type sudo space vim. Then you need to put the file, which is at slash etc slash motion slash motion dot conf. There we go. So the first thing that you want to do is to look for daemon and you need to set it to on. Then you need to go up a little bit and find stream underscore port. Now you're going to put any port you want. I personally use 8002. Next, you need to look for frame rate. So we have maximum frame. So we have stream underscore max rate, which is going to be 30. And we also have just frame rate 30. It's the same thing. And then you need to look for the width and the height of the webcam. So my webcam that I have is by default at 640 pixels by 480 pixels. So I just need to put them on this one. So width for uh, 640 and height 480. But your camera may be different. So you need to look for that. And so now we're good to go. So you need to write the file. So in Vim, you need to put the semicolon like this. Then you need to put W and Q to write and quit Vim. Okay, so now we need to run just a few commands and then we're going to have motion start all the time. So to do so, we need to do sudo Vim slash etc slash default and then motion. And you need to replace the no that should be here by yes. That is to start motion all the time. Then what you need to do is to run sudo systemctl enable motion.service. And finally, run sudo reboot. If you have this error, this is normal. That's because the Raspberry Pi is rebooting. And so you need to wait about 30 seconds to one minute to let the Raspberry Pi reboot. Once that is done, right click here and click restart session. And if you see the login as prompt, this is good. Then you need to re-log in as before. And so now we're good to go. And now we're finished. And now we just need to check the actual result. So open up your favorite web browser and enter the Raspberry Pi's IP address that you noted down earlier. So in my case, it's going to be 1.2.168.0.140. And then put the column and specify the port that you've put earlier. In my case, it's going to be 8002. Hit enter, and now we're going to get the live feed of the Raspberry Pi. So if I just come here and say hello, you see it updates in real time. So to show you that the system actually works, the other day I saw my little brother come into my room and stole my laptop while I was not here. So as you can see, the system actually works pretty well. That's it, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you got everything working as you wanted. And thank you very much for watching. See you next time.